Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another riveting episode of Tales from Shears Hill. I'm your host, Shadow, and this is Great 769. And tonight we're going to talk to you about an incident that happened here today. Well, uh, we had supper, and we have two dogs, and one of the dogs got really weirded out and kept staring into the kitchen. And his tail was down, and no matter what we did, he really wouldn't um, calm down at all. He, he was terrified. Like He, he was, was very scared. His tail was tucked between his legs. He's walking slow. He had whale eyes, and he, he the hair was standing up on the back of his neck, too. He, yeah. he was very, very upset. Yeah, he, he was extremely upset. Now, the thing is, is that we're not sure why he was upset, but uh, today, on our way home, uh, old friggin' I Spy Garbage. <laughs> uh, I, I brought a couple of items home. Yeah. Now, people who know me know that I love to recycle and use old, forgotten things in my artwork. And even some things to be repurposed. Like if I see a really nice dresser on the side of the road, if it fits in the car, it's coming home to be refinished. But today, I seen an old doll. It was missing a leg. It's probably, what, about a two-foot-tall doll? Yeah it's, yeah. it's an old vintage doll from the 1960s. Looks creepy because, as hell. Because we know it's 1960s because my sister had this exact doll. when the she The exact same the, one, so yeah. It's actually late 1950s. Well, it, it could be early 60s because it has eyeshadow sprayed on. Could to be it. 1960. So it, it, it has yeah. really long eyelashes and it has like that sea foamy green. Eyes. Yeah, like the eyes are like sp sprayed on. Yeah. And it has the um, the rocker eyes, like the lead back ones that the, the eyes open and close. But the, the eyes are really, really vibrant on this thing. It has like a very vivid green iris. Very creepy looking doll. It, yeah, it is, it's yeah. really creepy. Yeah. Anyway, I brought this thing home and I set it up on the wood pile. There's an old Samsonite suitcase there too, which is not in like brand new condition, but it still has a lot of life. Yeah, you know what? It. That suitcase just it's dawned old. on me. Mom had that exact suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, th the thing is, one, is one just like that. Where I found these two items is an abandoned house. It was out by the garbage bin of this abandoned house. So I don't know who put it there or what happened. But I, um, when I turned back to get these things, I pulled into the driveway of a man in the, of that community who passed away, what, about two months ago? No, a little longer than that. Be three. Yeah, three anyway. Any, anyway, I turned around in his driveway and the radio signal was coming in very, very clear. But when I was turning around his house, it was like almost like ghost box app or something was playing over top of my radio. And it said two names very clear. There was a woman's voice that said Harvey and a man's voice that said Jody. And this is before I picked these things up in the car. This is when I was turning around to go back for them. So that was weird because it was playing a white snake song clear as ever. The, the radio signal was extremely strong. And after I passed by this house... It was fine. Like when I left the driveway, no. there was no interference. No. And the power hasn't been on in that house for a while, so it's doubtful that it has any interference. Yeah. Anyway, after I brought these things home, that's when little Jack got upset. Got upset. But the thing is, is that I don't think that anything followed me home. I don't feel any presence attached to that doll or that suitcase. I don't feel anything there. No. But something was trying to contact me today. Yeah. And the thing is, is that I thought, well, I'll take Jack outside. And I took him outside, and he was really agitated. Like, he was really scared. He's very on edge. And his tail is between his legs. Um, he is just not happy at all. And when... I went to bring him in the house. He hesitated to come in the house. Yep. For Jack, that is really rare because he is um, he's a little food slut. 
and he he's a very go getter dog. Oh he's, yeah, he's not shy. He will go up to any yeah anybody. And and but he he hesitated to come in the house, and it was a a little while, and then you did your smudge, and then yeah. it seemed to go. Yeah, but it, it, as soon as I was done smudging, we went out in the kitchen with him, and he he looked to where he had been looking because he was looking at one particular spot on top of the counter by the fridge, terrified. But then after I did the smudging, he went out and he looked right there, and then he looked at me right surprises to say, "Hey, it's gone." Yeah. He, he was quite happy with that. Yeah, and then he, he investigated around, and he's been good he's been ever good. since. Yeah. Right? But it's, it's interesting that this happened, because I have had another experience with dogs and the supernatural. Back in, I forget the year, but there was a mine... It's early, in the early 90s. It was 91 or 92. Um, there was a mine explosion at Westray. And one of the men in the mine had been a neighbor of mine. And he grew up in this house a couple of doors down from my mother's house. And um, he, he was killed outright. So it wasn't long a few months afterwards I'm talking to the people that bought that house I want to are talking to the woman that lives in the guy's childhood home yeah lived in the guy's childhood home and she said there's something wrong with the hoax I said what do you mean she said well Henry that was their little dog he said she stands in the hall and he just barks and barks and barks and I said, or she said, and there's nothing there. Well, it clicked. I said, oh my God. Heather, I think that's Miles. She said, well, who's he? I said, he was the guy killed in West Ray Mine. He used to live in that house. He grew up in that house. It was his first house. He lived there till he was like 20. And she said, oh my God. I said, here's what you got to do. You've got to say miles you're dead go and that should solve the problem so the next time it happened she said that well guess what my dog standing in the hall barking and barking and barking and barking at nothing just like the other little dog neck right next door yeah well two doors up well the thing is he knew my house because it was identical to his house. It was one of these places they built all the houses the same. Mm -hmm. And he must have came to my house. So I said, Miles, you're dead. Go. And that was the last thing. But, you see, animals, I personally believe that animals are picking up on things that we miss all the time. Yeah. Right? Like, I mean, we, we, we know that they have a better sense of smell and a better sense of hearing. Maybe they have better sense of perception as well. But what do you think? Oh, I know they do, because yeah. over the years I've witnessed many things where animals are seeing stuff that, that, that we don't. Yeah. And one of my own cats, Marmy, I was probably, I would have been 10. I was laying in bed one night, and he used to sleep with me. He was a very cuddly cat with me, hated everybody else. Hmm. He was your stereotypical old battle-worn tomcat, but he loved me. So he was laying on my legs and I woke up and it was like there was something outside the window. And I was looking towards the window and he just bristled his hair and there was a noise outside the window and he hissed. But it wasn't like there was an actual animal outside, it was this really high pitched almost like science fiction movie laser type sound that was outside of our window. <sighs> And he he was very upset about this. I I have no idea what it was. It was no. definitely something supernatural because mm. who else would be wandering outside at like I don't know two or three in the morning outside of my bedroom window mm. with a toy laser gun or something yeah. stupid. Yeah. yeah. I I don't even think they had toys like that when mm. I was that age. 
but that's the thing you know uh, I mean we 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 sell animals short a lot of times you know oh, they're just dumb animals but I mean they've conned us into feeding them and taking care of them and spending massive amounts of money on them uh, uh, picking up their poo right <laughs> uh, but um, Jack saw something tonight there was something here and once you did the smudge then it's gone once it was gone right. and a lot of people laugh about doing smudge smudging ceremonies or other smoke purification rituals that oh it's just a lot of hocus pocus but I've done a lot of work over the years mm. in clearing our household and also doing smudges for other people well recently did a smudge for for a local business for a local business they, they said that there's just this real stagnant feeling there and this business is a, a place that works with a lot of people who are sick it so it's it's like a healing center of sorts and I went in there and I smudged from the basement right up to the top floor I went every doorway every window along every single wall and I was putting the intention into what I was doing I was you could call it praying or visualizing whatever you want to call it but really hard on getting rid of all the negativity and raising the energy in the place and the owner and the people who practice within this building they have all said the very next day the phone was ringing off the hook people booking appointments and every patient who came through there was talking about how great it felt in there yep. the people who didn't even know that a smudging happened were commenting about what a great atmosphere it is in there no smudging does do something smudging works um but you know we we the focus of our our, our channel here and everything like that is mainly stories and everything but when something happens and it does happen from time to time that we do have an experience we're going to talk about it yeah because and that that's the point of the channel too yeah. is to get out the real life supernatural stories because yeah. you hear a lot of old wives tales and, and there's an awful lot of crap yeah out there I mean, you just listen to them and you're going, oh, yeah, all right. You know, it's, it's just one of those urban legend things. Yeah. It's like everybody, every, every town you go to, they have their own lady in white, a bride who was killed on her wedding day, going to the church. Yeah, and yeah. She walks along the haunted road. Almost every town across North America has one. Probably yours. Or two. Well. Yeah. So it's like yeah. those are just urban legends. They may or may not be true. There well, may well, or may the, not the, be. The, this is one of the things that Helen Creighton said in her book. She said, she said, now, like, she has hundreds of stories in, um, in Blue Nose Ghosts. And every once in a while she'll say, now, I'm, I heard this story down in Barrington, Nova Scotia, but it sounds so similar to a story that came out of London or came out of Edinburgh right or came out of Hamburg yeah. right and because she, she was an aficionado uh, an aficionado of of ghost stories and of folk tales and so she just didn't study Nova Scotia she studied the all world the world and when and there was a similar story and, and 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 one of the things that I I found like and, and this is true in Blue Nose Ghosts there was a lot of stories that had a very similar flavor to them yeah right now I'd have to say that maybe one out of four would probably be legit and the other ones were passed on from whatever you know for whatever but um, that's the impression I get anyway but um, it's very difficult like uh, for me I believe that tonight we had an experience we definitely did have a visitor. We did have a visitor tonight. Right? And this happens. You know, you have visitors, you you just, well, that's the way it goes. 
too. But um, I don't get upset by it. I um, well, we have visitors all the time because the cats come to visit every once in a while. Our deceased cats. Yeah. I'm there making something at the counter, and out of the corner of my eye, I see this big bushy cat sitting there on the floor beside me and I know it's Scrapper come for, come yeah, for a little and, visit and, and, and or I'll see be, this uh, white streak run through his arrow running I'll, around. I'll be there and I'll hear a cat cry and our three cats are in here asleep Yeah. and the, the cry came from the one of the bedrooms. bedrooms. Yeah. Because yep. so, the, the back bedroom, which is now my room, we used to let the, the, the cats go in there when they were kittens and they used yeah. to just roam around looking for mice. Yeah. And stuff like that. You know. And man, I mean, imagine there's a few mice ghosts here too. Oh, probably we're probably overrun with mouse ghosts. Yeah. But um, no, but that that that's what happened today. And we thought that uh, it would be something that you would be interested in. And so subscribe and share and. Um, like Stay tuned for more spooky stories from Shears Hill. From, yeah. Till the next time.